would like to share with you a subject that I believe is of paramount importance to us today. The title of my presentation is God's Seal or the Mark of the Beast. There's much confusion and misunderstanding today about this subject. My goal is to shed some light on this subject and help our listeners to understand what the Word of God has to say about this very timely topic. May the Lord richly bless you as you view this short video. A seal deals with legal matters and has three elements, name, title or office, and territory of the authority. For example, the President of the United States uses his presidential seal to authenticate official documents. On the seal are his name, Abraham Lincoln, his title, President, and the territory over which he presides, the United States of America. Just as secular rulers or presidents have seals of authority, the God of Heaven also has his seal. It is found in the heart of the Ten Commandments. In the Fourth Commandment are the three elements of a seal. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days shalt thou labor and do all thy work. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it thou shalt not do any work, thou, son, nor thy daughter, thy manservant, nor thy maidservant, nor thy cattle, nor thy stranger that is within thy gates. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea, and all that in them is, and rested the seventh day. Wherefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. Exodus 20, 8 through 11. Here are the three elements in the fourth commandment. <clears throat> Number one, name, the Lord thy God. Two, title, creator, made. Three, territory, heaven and earth, the sea and all that is in them. Moreover also, I gave them my Sabbaths to be a sign between me and them, that they might know that I am the Lord that sanctify them. Exodus 20, verse 12. God gave the human race the Sabbath as a sign or mark of his creative power and authority. He wants to place his seal upon people's hearts and minds. It is interesting to read from a noted authority of the Roman Church that Saturday is the correct day to worship. If the Bible is the only guide for the Christian, then the Seventh-day Adventist is right in observing the Saturday with the Jew. Is it not strange that those who make the Bible their only teacher should inconsistently follow in this matter the tradition of the Church? Do we know of any person or organization that has admitted to having changed the law of God? Remember, dear friend, God's moral law as shown in the Ten Commandments can never be changed, but someone can think to change them. Papal Rome admits that it has changed God's rest day, the seventh day, Sabbath, to Sunday, a man-made institution. Can I prove this fact from a Catholic publication? The Convert's Catechism of Catholic Doctrine by Peter German, page 50. Question. Which is the Sabbath day? Answer. Saturday is the Sabbath day. Question. Why do we observe Sunday instead of Saturday? Answer. We observe Sunday instead of Saturday because the Catholic Church and the Council of Laodicea, A.D. 336, transferred the solemnity from Saturday to Sunday. These words are clear and they leave no doubt or question in our minds. Now you may be wondering what the Protestant churches have to say about the Sabbath day. This is what the Congregationalists say. 
It is quite clear that however rigidly or devotedly we may spend Sunday, we are not keeping the Sabbath. The Sabbath was founded on a specific divine command. We complete no such command for the observance of Sunday. There is not a single line in the New Testament to suggest that we incur any penalty by violating the supposed sanctity of Sunday. Dr. R. W. Dale, The Ten Commandments, page 106 to 107. What do the Presbyterians say? There is no word, no hint in the New Testament about abstaining from work on Sunday. The observance of Ash Wednesday or Lent stands exactly on the same footing as the observance of Sunday. Into the rest of Sunday, no divine law enters. Canon eaten in the Ten Commandments. What do the Anglicans say? And where are we told to keep the first day at all? We are commanded to keep the seventh but we are nowhere commanded to keep the first day. Isaac Williams, Plain Sermons on the Catechism, pages 334 to 336. I will not quote what the Baptists, the Lutherans, Free Church, Episcopalians, Methodists, Disciples of Christ, and Southern Baptists say. They all write in their books that the change from Saturday to Sunday is not warranted by the Bible. Friends, look into the subject more thoroughly. Read your Bibles to see whether God has authorized a change of the Sabbath. You will not find it. In contrast to the seal of God, the Catholic Church also has a mark of authority, which is a counterfeit seal or mark. We will look at this now. Mark of the Beast. In reply to a letter dated October 28, 1895 to Cardinal Gibbons asking if the church claimed the change of the Sabbath as its mark, the following statement was received. Of course the Catholic Church claims that the change was her act, and the act is a mark of her ecclesiastical power and authority in religious matters. Here's one more quotation, and there are many more. Sunday is our mark of authority. The church is above the Bible, and this transference of Sabbath observance is proof of that fact. Here is an explanation from one Christian author that shows what it means to have the mark of the beast. But when Sunday observance shall be enforced by law, and the world shall be enlightened concerning the obligation of the true Sabbath, then whoever shall transgress the command of God to obey a precept which has no higher authority than that of Rome will thereby honor popery above God. He is paying homage to Rome and to the power which enforces the institution ordained by Rome. He is worshiping the beast and his image. As men then reject the institution which God has declared to be the sign of his authority and honor in its stead that which Rome has chosen as the token of her supremacy, they will thereby accept the sign of allegiance to Rome, the mark of the beast. And it is not until the issue is thus plainly set before the people and they are brought to choose between the commandments of God and the commandments of men, that those who continue in transgression will receive the mark of the beast. The change of the Sabbath is the sign or mark of authority of the Romish church. Those who, understanding the claims of the fourth commandment, choose to observe the full Sabbath in the place of the true, or thereby paying homage to that power by which alone it is commanded. The mark of the beast is the papal Sabbath, which has been accepted by the world in the place of the day that God hallowed. No one has yet received the mark of the beast. The testing time has not yet come. 
there are true Christians in every church not accepting the Roman Catholic communion. None are condemned until they have had the light and have seen the obligation of the fourth commandment. But when the decree shall go forth enforcing the counterfeit Sabbath, and the loud cry of the third angel shall warn men against the worship of the beast and his image, the line will be clearly drawn between the false and the true. Then those who still continue in transgression will receive the mark of the beast. The great issue that will divide this world will be the commandments of God. His people will not receive the mark of the beast because they will be loyal to all of his commandments, including true Sabbath worship. This world is moving swiftly toward the final contest that will decide the destiny of all who inhabit the earth. I sincerely pray that our hearts and minds will be open to this great truth that when God laid the foundations of the earth and created all the wonders of the land and the sea, he instituted the Sabbath day and made it holy. It was a memorial that was to stand till the close of earth's history. The seal of, seal of God's law is found in the fourth commandment. This is the only commandment that contains the name and the title of the lawgiver. It declares him to be the creator of the heavens and the earth, and thus shows his claim to reverence and worship of all others. May we all see before it is too late that the Sabbath of the fourth commandment is the seal of the living God. For someday soon, the Sabbath will be the great test of loyalty. The great controversy between good and evil, Christ and Satan, will not rage on forever. A glorious future awaits those who trust in Christ and who overcame him, the accuser of our brethren, Satan, by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. Revelation 12, verse 11. Through Christ alone can you make sure of heaven where all is purity, holiness, peace and blessedness, where there are glories that mortal lips cannot describe. The nearest we can come to a description of the reward that awaits the overcomer is to say that it is a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. It will be an eternity of bliss, a blessed eternity, unfolding new glories throughout, throughout the ceaseless ages. God bless you all. Amen.